Thank you. Uh, my name is Maggie Ryder, and I'm a scientist at a startup called Sunday. Today, I'm going to present work conducted with my colleagues, Linda Schilling and Jesse McClure, about lawn soil properties in the U.S. Uh, for some background about our approach to lawn care at Sunday, we offer custom lawn care plans and products that are tailored to the unique needs of your lawn. So we use a combination of soil testing, climate data, and aerial imagery to, to do this. And the soil testing piece is important to identify uh, nutrient deficiencies or pH imbalances and other soil issues. Over the last four years, we have compiled the largest uh, residential soil test database with over 180,000 soil tests um, sent in by customers like you see pictured here. When we look at this data in aggregate, there are some interesting findings. Um, first, you can see that all these lawns are located in urban areas. Lawns are very much part of the built environment or an urban crop. Um, most lawns have good soil chemical properties. The pH is appropriate. The nutrient levels are sufficient. Organic matter is good. Something like salinity problems is really rare and it only occurs in the handful of lawns that you can see here. Um, but overall, there's no meaningful chemical or nutrient limitations to lawns. These results were surprising to us because we thought that nutrients would be more limiting to turf grass health. But we're happy to learn that most lawns have healthy, functional soils that don't need a lot of additional fertilizer. Uh, now to get to some of this, the spatial part of this, uh, urban lawn soils are spatially correlated. You can see you know, higher or lower areas of potassium here. It's well established that soils in the United States are spatially correlated because of geology or vegetation, um, but we weren't sure about lawn soils on this scale due to the human element of urban soils where there's a lot more um, sort of human transported or human altered materials. Then we thought, if your property is similar to your neighbor's property, could we predict soil test results um, based on our, the existing neighborhood data that we have? And the structure of our data lends itself to the K nearest neighbors algorithm, where the prediction of a new data point, like a new address in a neighborhood, is based on the class of your nearest neighbors. So if we wanted to classify this gray point here, we could look at the five nearest neighbors. Uh, three of them are yellow, two of them are green. And the majority wins, so this new address would be classified as yellow. Some additional notes on the modeling. Our hyperparameter tuning showed that K equals 15 is actually the optimal number of nearest neighbors to use. And these model accuracies are adequate for our uh, specific context, where um, within our company, this information is used by our R&D formulation specialists to develop more customized products, like our Northwest Nutrients product should include additional calcium for that region. It's used by our marketing team for a social proofing. We're saying Sunday knows Colorado lawns, draws people in, and it, it builds trust and confidence. And also by our supply chain planner to forecast product needs. For example, new customers in Florida will need potassium boost, and we can proactively include this for them. Thank you very much.